In this video, we'll be talking about the funding of the NHS, and specifically how money trickles its way from Parliament through taxes down into the NHS, into hospitals, into GP practices, and into patient-facing services. It's really important to understand just the magnitude of the money that's spent on the NHS, but also how, when you actually look at how it trickles down to the patient itself, it works out to be quite small. Now, if you look at the total amount of money that's taken in taxes, and then that which is allocated to the Department of Health and Social Care, which basically funds the NHS, it works out to be about £130 billion. It should be noted that this is slightly different to the values that are given on the government website. This particular value of 130 billion is taken for the year of 2018 to 19, and it's based on a King's Fund analysis, which takes into account some of the money that doesn't necessarily make its way to the NHS, which is why the government values of 160 billion are slightly higher than what the King's Fund uses. Now, £130 billion pounds sounds like a huge amount, but it works out to be about roughly £2,300 per person. So you can see that it's a relative bargain running the NHS. Now, the Department of Health and Social Care is a Whitehall Parliament-based department, and it is through this that the money gets filtered down to the NHS. Immediately, the money gets divided into two parts. The day-to-day -day running of the NHS which is £124.4 billion. Pounds. But also, they spend about £6 billion every year on capital. Now, what capital means is this is the buildings and the land that the NHS has, and also the rent on different bits and pieces that are required just from the infrastructure perspective of the NHS. Now, out of the £124.4 billion pounds that the NHS has, it gets divided immediately into two parts. You have NHS England. This is what people generally think of as the NHS. This accounts for the GP practices, the hospitals, the paramedics and so on. But there is a separate branch, completely separate to NHS England, which actually deal with vaccinations, public health, training and healthcare regulations. And this takes about £11.7 billion out of the £124 billion. So all of the things that we traditionally see as NHS is encompassed within the £112 billion. Pounds. So you can see that already it's whittled down quite a lot from the £130 billion total. So how does NHS England use this £112.7 billion? Pounds? Well, again, it divides it up into two parts. It thinks about national spending and local spending. In terms of national spending... What it does is it divides it into a fund, and it's a fund that can fund things like rare cancer treatments and rare treatments of diseases that there's only maybe a few that you see in the country. So if you were to just rely on local authorities funding it, they wouldn't have enough money to be able to fund these things. So the NHS takes a separate fund, and for cancer, for example, it is called the Cancer Fund. And this funds things that are very rare, that are very difficult to treat and that individual CCGs or the local authority areas aren't necessarily willing to pay for. It also has a slush fund for service providers and for CCGs. This is for additional money if they need it and also for money if they're getting into trouble with certain bits. And that takes out 28.2 billion which leaves about 84 to 85 billion pounds that then gets funneled into hospitals, GPs, mental health services, and other things. So this is really the front face of the NHS. And the way in which NHS England allocates all this 85 billion pounds is that it looks at each different area and the whole of the country is divided up into different areas called CCGs or clinical commissioning groups. These specific clinical commissioning groups are basically areas of the country and each of these areas have very different number, amounts of disease, very different populations, different numbers of people in the population and different amounts of disease within that population. So through complicated formulae the, C, the NHS England gives each of the local CCGs a different cut of that £85 billion. And that cut depends upon the healthcare needs of that particular area. 
So let's look at two different examples here. This is the summary for the 2018 spending at South Lancaster CCG. You can see that they had a total of £169.4 million. Compare that to the Somerset CCG, which had a budget of £761 million. The reason for the difference between the two is partly population. Somerset has a much bigger population than South Lancaster. But also, the complex healthcare needs of the two different populations are very different. And so, they need more or less money depending upon that. It's also really interesting just to have a look to see how the money itself is divided within a CCG. So you can see here, the South Lancaster CCG, that about £87 million is spent in the hospitals. A fraction of that, only £3 million is spent on ambulances and about £16 million in the community. So you can see that this very quickly gets divided up and so you're only really getting small parts into each bit. And on the face of it, you'd think that £87 million a year for a hospital seems quite a lot. But then, if you imagine how many doctors, nurses, physios, pharmacists, dietitians, and other specialists are involved just in the day-to-day -day running, so just to pay their salaries, not to mention all of the investigations and treatments like surgery and scans and procedures that are done every single day in the NHS, how that value of 87.4 million very quickly becomes a tiny fraction when you look at each department in turn. So you can see how actually the NHS is really, really efficient. It's managing to use quite a small amount of money in a really effective way. It's really important to appreciate these things, especially when applying for medical school, because you start to get an idea of the scale of the money that's used, but also how that money very quickly comes down to quite small amounts. A very common question that's asked in interview questions is, if you had a million pounds, what, what would you do to improve the NHS? Well, you can see quickly that a million pounds out of 87.4 million pounds isn't actually that much money. So... Actually, you need to think a little bit about how you're going to most effectively invest that. And you could see how potentially, if you find that lots of patients are waiting long periods of time to come into hospital because the ambulance service is overstretched, and that's causing them to become more and more unwell, and therefore be very unwell when they come to hospital, needing much longer hospital stays, rather than spending the money in the A&E departments, you might say, well, 1 million out of 3.3 million, that's a, that's a third of the money you can invest into the ambulance service, which may well mean that people get into hospital earlier and therefore get treated earlier and therefore don't require the long hospital stays that they would need if they'd come into hospital later. So you can start to give a bit more of a nuanced answer to those sorts of questions. And it's only possible to do that by actually really looking at the amount of money that different CCGs spend but also appreciating that there are big differences between CCGs and therefore patient populations.